closely wedged between other islands of Indonesia lies Bali, a small volcanic island with mountains towering 10,000 feet above the sea. A million people live crowded together on this tiny island, most of them in little villages. This is the village of Bedolo. Here, as in other villages of Bali, life has changed little during hundreds of years. Homes are simple, the ways of living frugal. The staple food is rice. Here, drying on a roof, is rice, the most precious gift of nature. The good earth gives it generously to the people of Bali. Their implements of work are simple, long sticks with which to beat the rice and separate the grain from the stalk, long sticks of light bamboo. The tools are simple, but nearly everybody on the island gets enough to eat. Hard working are the people of Bedolo, hard working and clinging to their old ways. The women of Bedolo perpetuate the time-honored craft of spinning. Using the same tools as their ancestors, they fashion garments for the coming festival of the new year. Their looms and spinning wheels were made by village craftsmen. The patterns woven into the ceremonial scarves and sarongs, along with the skill of weaving, have been passed on from mother to daughter. And with them, the secret of making rich, colorful vegetable dyes. The art of carving masks is also time-honored and respected in the village. Ceremonial masks carved out of the native wood are appropriately painted for dance rituals. In Bedolo, the most important person is the village priest. He has the knowledge, skill, and right to perform religious ceremonies, to interpret the meaning of signs and omens, and to conduct services. Just now, he is ready to perform the important ceremony of passage. Passage of this boy from boyhood to manhood. The boy is carried on his father's back to the village shrine. In the presence of his family and neighbors, he will become a man. With these symbolic motions, the priest accepts a new citizen in the name of the village. Now, coming out from the shrine, the boy is still self-conscious in his new role. But Soon he will learn the duties of men in the village. This is a hot and humid island. Rains cause mountain streams to swell with water. Water that the people of Bedolo have learned to control and use for irrigating the fields and terraces. This is the season for planting the young shoots of rice. Here, people believe in carrying on customs inherited from their forefathers. It is custom in Bedalo that every project shall be regarded the common responsibility of the entire village. Although land is owned individually, the planting of rice is performed by the whole village under the rule of Sukuduku. Sukuduku, all working together, first in one man's field, then in the field of his neighbor, till all the planting is done. Working together in planting and reaping the harvest. Working together in building the terraces that will bear the rich crop keeping the terraces from breaking down under the pressure of weather or water, never ceasing to take care of the precious fertile soil which needs constant attention so that the tropical weeds will not creep over the planted acres. Rich are the colors of nature in Bali. Numerous are the native flowers, brilliant like this orchid, or graceful like these water plants that have inspired many patterns on the ceremonial scarves and sarongs. Flowers also play their part in the dress of the women. Here, a young maiden is getting ready for a trip to town. She shapes her hair as tradition demands. She decorates the thick black hair with flowers. Flowers arranged in a special way to make her look beautiful, to indicate her standing in the village, and to please the gods, the gods she has been taught never to forget. She offers them an arrangement of flowers. Now she feels that she will be protected from evil on her journey. In long lines, the women file off to market in a town nearby. Heavy loads balance gracefully on their heads. The marketplace bristles with activity. People from many villages meet in the market square. Red peppers are among the ingredients required for a good Balinese meal. Hot red peppers. 
and even hotter green peppers for the rice dishes of Bali, and onions to improve the flavor. Juicy limes and flowers will make good salad. Wrapped in banana leaves, the merchandise is passed from hand to hand by patient women traders. While many kinds of fruits are sold and bartered, news is exchanged on the busy market square. Overhead in the village and on the way to market, people have placed religious symbols to remind them of the presence of their gods. Small symbols for local gods, large offerings of flowers for the mighty gods of the island. With great skill and fine sense for color, the Balinese prepare their religious offerings. Time-honored rituals take place. Old legends are told by means of plays. In this legend, the struggle between good and evil is acted out. The crowd gets more and more excited watching the play, although everybody knows how it will end. Once a year, the villagers of Bedolo join neighbors from far and near across the island on the journey to a temple overlooking the ocean, a temple built on a picturesque bluff above the white surf. They carry food offerings that will be presented to the gods in spirit, but later will be eaten by the pilgrims themselves. Praying, they pass through the temple gates built in the traditional style of India, because much of the religion of Bali came from India, and with it the great legend of the Ramayana, here, a dance called the Monkey Dance, or Kachok, celebrates the happy ending of the legend. In the story, Queen Sita, the beautiful wife of the holy King Rama, is kept prisoner in the castle of the demon Ravana. The monkeys help King Rama to defeat the demons of Ravana and to liberate his queen. Music, too, is tied up with the old legends. And the same is true of the dance. The dancing maidens of Bali, trained from childhood in the difficult art of ceremonial dance, act out the old legends of the island. They dance to the chant of the storyteller, who explains their dancing for the spectators. In spite of the many holidays and ceremonies, the work must go on in the village of Betelo. The rice is yellow to ripeness and will soon be ready for harvesting. Harvesting by all the villagers together. But first, the goddess of rice must be thanked with the first sheaf of rice and flowers. Each man in his shrine pays tribute to the goddess. Each in his own way expresses his humble thanks. And then harvesting. Harvesting sukuduku by working together to take the precious grain from this field to the village to select the best grain for new seedlings. Carefully, workers pull stalk after stalk. They believe that this will please the goddess whose hair the rice is supposed to be. Carefully, they gather the rice so little of it will be lost. And thus, religion and practical reasoning join hands to protect the rich harvest as a reward for the months of work and care. And while this field is being harvested, other fields are growing a new crop. The Balinese pride themselves on being the most skilled of all rice growers. Nature helps them because in this warm climate, rice can grow at all seasons of the year. They've had to learn to build rice fields up along steep slopes of the mountains in order to provide food for themselves and their children. The land in Bali must yield many harvests to feed the million people of this beautiful, tiny island squeezed between the larger islands of the young Republic of Indonesia.